Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. I have got what is probably going to be the last sneak peek before the new holiday catalog goes live on August 3rd. If you don't have that holiday catalog yet and you are a Kitchen Table Stamper customer, you've ordered from me, check your email because I did send email asking if you want the catalog. Everybody responded yes, your catalogs are on the way. And this is the Clever Cats. It's a um, photopolymer 17 piece stamp set and it's brand new from Stampin' Up. You can get this in your starter kits right now or as a customer, you can purchase it August 3rd. If you are a demonstrator already, this is available on your pre-order. Funny stamp set, great for Halloween, but great for your cat lovers too. I particularly love, really, I've been this cute all nine lives. So much fun. All right, so this is the card we're making. It's a fun fold. Isn't that cool? It stands and displays really nicely. Super cute, right? All right, let's get started. You need some basic black cardstock, and this is eight and a half by five and a half. Let's pop it in the Simply Score tool. We're gonna score it up for this fun fold. You'll notice that it starts out the same size as a standard card base. We're gonna score at two and an eighth and at four and a quarter. And let's burnish that with a bone folder. All right, so we're gonna fold it up like a standard card and then fold back on that two and an eighth inch score line. And there's our card base. All right, our designer series paper for this project is from the cute Halloween six by six designer series paper. It's two by three and five eighths. Don't worry about scrambling for the measurements or the scores. That'll all be available on the printable project sheet. Just follow the link below the video to the blog. You'll click where it says project details. Click here. It'll take you to the blog and you'll find a printable project sheet hyperlinked right below the embedded video. And it'll say click here to get your clever cats fun fold Halloween card project sheet. You can just print off the measurements instead of scramble. All right, so there's our fun fold. Pretty cool, right? Got two pumpkin pie scalloped pierced rectangles. We cut those ahead of time and we use the scalloped contours dies. So it's not the biggest, it's the second biggest. And we cut them from pumpkin pie. And then we've got some pieces to lay inside of those. So inside the pierce lines, one from basic white, one from basic gray. And these are um, two and five eighths by three and seven eighths. And I put that little measurement right on my die chart. So if you're a kitchen table stamper follower, you know my die charts. But the fun part is, is as I determine what sizes fit inside, I'm just making a note of that right on the chart and I never have to measure that ever again. So just a little tip. Let's go ahead and emboss this one and stamp this one. Let me slide these guys to the side for just a minute. Let me show you my embossing. It's very gentle on the gray basic gray piece. I used the Timber 3D folder, but I used it horizontal. So I think it kind of looks like maybe some wind in the night sky. We're gonna pop that in there and get that horizontal pattern going on on our gray. It's just a subtle touch that makes a big difference. Got my Stampin' and Cut and Emboss machine here. And we're gonna pop this in on number one so we can clear away our cutting pads and number two, we don't need that one. Let's pop in this guy right on number one. And then number four goes on top for a 3D folder. We're gonna give that some texture. Quick little crank. Pretty cool, huh? Kind of subtle and a little bit nondescript. So I encourage you to use it for outside of the box applications. All right, Stim and Pierce map, our ink pads for this project, our soft suede, bumblebee, and tuxedo black. We're going to start with this guy right here. This is our um, two and five eighths by three and seven eighths inch piece. And I've got the cutest little greeting for inside. Have a perfect Halloween. We're gonna stamp it high of center and then centered right to left. So a little bit high, see? Then we have the cutest little spider. We're gonna stamp him to the right above the greeting. 
And then our last step is the spider web. And I found that this was the easiest um, order to do them in because then you can drop your spider web down nice and straight. Super cute, right? That's for our inside. Now let's also take care of our broom right now. We gotta stamp a broom and we gotta stamp it in two colors. So let me grab my simple chamois. We're gonna start by stamping the bristles of the broom in Bumblebee. All right, then we gotta wipe that off and we gotta stamp the whole broom in soft suede. Set those guys aside and we're not done stamping yet. I'm gonna bring in my Stamparatus for just a minute here. Got my Stamparatus set up and a piece of white scrap. Got my cat. Now I want a really dark black cat. So I'm gonna ink this in Memento and stamp on the basic white scrap. So this way we're gonna get a white belly and white paws and white eyes we're gonna get a super black cat. We're gonna lift slowly so nothing shifts. We're gonna ink again, because we want a really black cat. And then we're gonna stamp again. So we're stamping two times, but the Stamparatus allows us to stamp in exactly the same spot two times. And now look at how solid and black our cat is. Let's slide the magnets away from each other, never towards each other. And there's our cat. I'm not gonna clean my stamp just yet, so I'm gonna drop some grid paper in there so that they don't get ink all over my magnets and my foam mat, just so that I don't have ink pick up on another project or when I touch the magnets on my fingers. So just a little tip there if you're not gonna clean it right away, if you're gonna use the stamp again, maybe. All right, we still have a little bit of stamping to do. Let me slide my cat to the side. We're gonna cut those in just a minute. Uh, let's see here, I've got couple more shapes that I die cut ahead of time for you. Let me show you those. All right, so let me bring my Stampin' Pierce mat back in here. Let's show you where those came from so you know what to cut if you're gonna copy this card. I've got the second largest bracket top tag from the TaylorMade Tags dies. All right, and that's from Basic White. We're also gonna cut this little reinforcer little circle reinforcer here from pumpkin pie. So those are both from the same tailor-made tags die set. All right, our moon is bumblebee cardstock and we cut that using the layering circles dies. This is the two and three eighths inch circle. Okay, let's grab another piece of that mini grid paper. I love this stuff, it's so handy. We're gonna put that under our moon and I'm gonna just give it some speckles. So it looks like that cratering on the moon. I'm using the speckle from Color and Contours. All right, there's a couple of great new stamp sets with speckles in them though. So if you've got one in your collection, awesome. And if you don't, Color and Contour does have one. And this comes in really handy for adding a little extra um, pizzazz to your images. So I'm looking for kind of a crescent arrangement so that it'll swoop the side of the moon here. Swoop, that's a technical term. See, so we got kind of a crescent of craters on our moon. Now we can take away our, stamp it, our grid paper. On the outside of the card, it says my tail says it's twitching hour, but we wanna leave a little room for that tail. So we're gonna stamp it a little bit left of center in Memento Tuxedo Black. Cute, yes? All right, I think we're done stamping. At least I don't have any stamps left over here. So let's get the ink pads and stamp and pierce mat out of the way and finish assembling this card. All right, first a little assembly so I don't lose any pieces. We're gonna add a little multi-purpose liquid glue on the back of this reinforcer. Less is really more. Once you get a little bit on there, then just spread it around. And we're gonna put that over the hole in our tag and bring back in our scallops that we cut earlier and let's frame our inside greeting and that'll go right in the center of these stitches we figured out those measurements for you and 
Next, we're gonna adhere that gorgeous wood grain to the center of our other orange scallop, right inside those little, I guess it's more piercing than stitching, which is kind of cool. And really burnish that down because it's got a texture. We wanna make sure it grabs. Then our moon, we're gonna glue that so that it's centered right to left in the gray, but it's gonna be very high of center. So what I did when I lined this up is I did center, so it's equal, and then just a little bit more on the top than on the sides, and that gave me good placement for everything. Let's bring our card base in, and we gotta line these guys up. So the best way to do this is we're gonna take your glue and adhere the inside so that it's centered in the back panel, get a nice even border, all four sides, and then burnish down. Once that's burnished on, you really have to be careful when you add this piece not to glue your card closed. So the best way that I found to do that is to go ahead and just make a rectangle that's inside the scallops, less than halfway. Then you can just bring this piece on, line up your scallops top, bottom, and right, so they cover the inside ones and burnish for the tab. Now, no chance that you put the glue on the back of the scallop past the fold and glued your card shut. <laughs> Just another little tip, I hope it helps you. Oh, got a little glue out the bottom there. Let's just clear that away. Cute, cute, cute. All right, we've got to do some fussy cutting, but I'll do it by the magic of television. We're already started here. I'm going to just finish cutting out my cat, leaving just a little white border all the way around. You're gonna fussy cut these three pieces. And when you fussy cut them, you want a tiny border on the item. Let's see here. And you wanna work, see how I'm working the cat, I'm not working the scissors and those little, little bumpy areas around the tail. Just Man maneuver what you're cutting into the scissor instead of trying to hack the scissor around what you're trying to cut. You see, with my soft suede, you'll notice that I cut off all the um, little stray broom bristles because we're going to layer this bumblebee one over it and this one we can preserve the details. There's no reason to cut the details on this bottom one that's going to get covered and cut the details on this top one that's going to piece over it. So just a little time saving tip. Cut off your soft suede broom at all these little stray pieces and then just preserve the detail one time. And you'll cut around the bristles for bumblebee. And again, support your scissor, put either the middle finger or the ring finger in the loop, support with your index finger, drive the paper, not the scissors. The scissors just pretty much open and close. Maybe they cooperate a little bit and then rotate through. All right, there's our bumblebee broom. So see the difference? You cut all those little details in bumblebee, you just sliced them right off on Soft suede. I'm gonna pop a dimensional on the soft suede broom. Peel and expose the adhesive. Add the bumblebee details over the top. And there's our adorable little dimensional broom. Isn't that cute? Got some brand new embellishments. These are coming in August 3rd. Got subtle shimmer sequins and this gingham ribbon it's black and white quarter inch gingham ribbon and it is going to be your favorite through the whole holiday season it's cozy for fall projects it's stark and traditional black and white with pops of orange for halloween and it's really um, great flannel um, and works fantastic with the new celebration peaceful patterns designer series paper so you want this ribbon to go all the way through the fall and winter season it's really great ties beautiful it's kind of um narrow and it makes a super flat knot so this was actually a, a good ribbon for mailing all right 
So let's trim off the tails and let's glue that to our card. We want it so that it goes off the edge of our orange scallops, but not past the edge of the card. And a little bit, just a hair below the moon works. Still wanna be able to fit your ribbon into the envelope nicely. So not quite to the edge of the card. Then our broom can go on with liquid glue. And our broom we wanna put so it just sees the peak of the moon below. Oh my cuteness. And our kitty. Doesn't he look like, why? Well, what do you want? I love his face. I told my friend, they've just got so much, so much, and she said catness, and I said, exactly. They've got so much catness. They really got, the, the um, clever cats really have so much cat attitude. We're gonna put our clever cat on with some Stampin' Dimensionals, and I cut them in half here and spread them out because we wanna support his fluffiness here. All right, we're all sticky, and I love it. Isn't this one like, what, what? And this one's like, I fits, I sits. <laughs> anyway, whether you're a cat lover or you know cat lovers, this is a great stamp set. Or if you're a Halloween lover. All right, there's our cat. Last up, let's give it a little bling, kind of a starry night. And I've got my, got my subtle shimmer sequins, got paper snips, and take your pick tool. What I'm going to do is grab my putty and my multi-purpose liquid glue, and we're going to go ahead and, and work in sections. We're going to put three little dots, pick up three different sequins. That's what I love about this. Different colors, different sizes. This is kind of a matte silver one. Um, we got a shiny little silver one here, and let's go for a white one this time of a pearly white really cool combination all right i'm going to do the same thing down here with three if you have any trouble this is what the scissors are for you can just kind of use the tip of the scissor to get your sequin where you want it all right then the last one i'm going to put two right here haha <laughs> so cute all right let me grab a big one and a little one of some kind there are our last two. I'm just gonna use the tip of the scissor to really push them into the glue. And there it is. My tail says it's the twitching hour. Have a perfect Halloween. If you've got any questions about the project, uh, the products, if there's anything I can do to help you stay crafty, email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. You can also send an email to that address if I can send you a Stampin' Up! catalog. The holiday catalog is about to go live. To shop Stampin' Up! 24-7, buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.